Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And in the last stream we, um, uh, we might have committed a genocide, yes. Uh, so we have managed to uh, push the biters back a little bit further. So let's take a bit of, let's take a look at that and then see what else has been going on around the factory. So this is, as you can tell, a map of all of Norvis. We explored all the way to the edge using the navigation satellite and its auto-scan function. And we then, well, in, in the last stream, we started off by having Tristan, before we started, drop a few of the anti-biter capsules. And those are the ones that drop the biter um, evolution level back a little bit and kill off quite a lot of them. And that made going out and wiping them out a lot easier. That said, in order to do that, we did do some upgrading of our equipment first. So I've got at the moment, I have this, this suit which allows me to fly around at high speed as with all of these jetpacks. Um, I've still got an RTG in it and I'm not really sure why. I guess it's just because I haven't upgraded it yet. Uh, but this is my building suit, which is why it's full of roboports. I talked about this a bit last time. But I also did some upgrading of my uh, power of my power armor instead of my thruster suit. And this has now got lots and lots of power generation in it, some batteries and a handful of lasers of both sniping and, uh, and submachine. And I haven't done the numbers to work out which ones are actually better for uh, damage per second or um, damage per joule, I suppose. Um, but uh, it did occur to me part way round that this, this set selection is probably silly because it means that most of the time the sniper lasers were doing all of the work and the submachine lasers weren't really doing anything because I wasn't close enough to the biters. That said, it did mean that if I, if I then flew in and got very, very close to them or any of them came up close to me, there were some extra weapons that could deal with those. And so we started our sweep, we made our way up round the top bit, so cleared that out area out first because most of that had already been wiped out because if you, as you may remember, uh, Tristan had been building out on this side and putting in huge numbers of the massive laser artilleries. Mark had been going out this way with the uh, with, with, with um, a slightly different building style but also wiping out all the biters. So there were just a few left in this sort of top area. And then we swept around the bottom area down here. It probably took about 45 minutes in total but we had a bit of a sort of a random rambling discussion about um, Star Wars and Star Trek and possibly Stargate and various other various other sci-fi things while we were doing it. So it was a uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a nice time for all. Um, and uh, as you can see, the uh, the lasers were absolutely lethal at dealing with the biters as we as we flew past. With that many lasers in our in your inventory, you can you can deal with them very very quickly and easily. The only problem is that because they're all quite powerful, they rip through your battery packs very very quickly. Um, and so I, there were a few times when I had to stop and land. Fortunately, because Tristan did the anti biter capsules first, it meant that most the biters were relatively small and, and we thinned them out a lot and so we did spend more time flying around between bases rather than just standing around on the ground twiddling our thumbs waiting for things to recharge. Having finally eliminated all the biters, well it turns out we didn't really need the walls anymore. So uh, Mark's put in these deconstruction planners over all of the walls and all the laser turrets on the planet. And um, well mostly it's been pretty effective. These ones are clearly just outside the uh, logistics area. But a lot of the walls, like the one across the top here, you can still see the substations along here that were powering all the lasers but the wall is gone. And we've got the same sort of thing all the way around the edge wherever we had walls. And that has meant that if I come in now and click on one of these pylons, you can see that our power consumption has plummeted. Now, okay, I've turned the lights on, so we're producing twice as much power as normal. That's just 80 gigawatts, not 159. But we're still only using just over a quarter of the amount of power available. And if I look back over the last 10 hours, you can see that along here, we laid the laser artillery turrets, we're using crazy amounts of power, 24 gigawatts, occasionally all the way up to 30 gigawatts. And then suddenly it dropped down to here where they're using about three gigawatts. So there's still, still apparently, there's still a few out there that um, probably need to be found and pulled up. But basically we, we've taken the, We've, we've dropped off about about 20 gigawatts on the amount of power being used by the by the artillery, which is fantastic. And if I then hide the laser artillery and just show the normal la normal laser turrets, we can see that's had a massive drop as well. But that because that's because that was only peaking at 445 megawatts before, as opposed to the 24 gigawatts, and it's now dropped. It's now dropped down to 10% of that. Um, it's kind of insignificant compared to the power of the uh, laser artillery turrets. So yeah, we have saved an enormous amount of power here, so we're probably not going to need to expand the solar up in Norbit for a little while, especially as we've also cut back quite drastically on the particle accelerators. And if I look back over the last hour or so, you can see that they've gone from this sort of wibbly area to down here. And this is probably going to be, because, at least partly, because we've now started producing particle stream using the new matter science based system rather than using uh, particle accelerators. And so that saved us quite a lot of power as well. So all in, we're using huge amounts less electricity than we were using before. And that, although that has been partially compensated by some of the, uh, the things that happened in the newest update, where suddenly a lot of the Crastorio machines use a lot more power than they did before. Four. Last week, I mentioned how we'd had a lot of problems with various spaceships around the around the system. They, they'd all had 
issues of one kind or another. So, for example, the Agnair one hadn't been able to unload all of the enriched vulcanite, and that had caused it to jam up, and so it wasn't leaving, and so we, we ran out of vulcanite. Uh, Kothar had, all, had also run out of vulcanite, probably because it wasn't requesting enough, and for some reason it's unloaded, at, um, oh, it's only unloaded nine plus this smattering up here. Well, let's not worry about that. That's quite a small amount. But something went wrong, and it's unloaded some vulcanite here. That shouldn't happen. Uh, Snowdrop had some issues. Lots and lots of issues were happening around, around the, uh, the factory. So let's take a look into those. The first one is Agnair, and as you can see, this is running quite happily. A spaceship has obviously been quite recently, because we've got a load of junk being unloaded here and then passed over to the train system to be taken away. But we have a nice, healthy supply of uh, vulcanite here. We've got 65,000 in there, 100,000 in there. Now, it is flowing down here to be put into other um, other spaceships, but that's good. That's what we want to see happening, because we do need to have it flowing through. We do use up vulcanite elsewhere, so this is the system running as expected. The fact that we can see unloading here suggests that there is a, an Agnair. Oh, no, the Agnair ship has got all the way back to orbit. But if we have a look in Agnorbit, we can see that it's, it's now loading up. So, again, the system is working as expected. We've got a, 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 a healthy supply flowing in here. The, the ship's about 20% full. The trains are flowing. We're, bring, we're taking water in any form of ice down, back down to the planet. We're bringing the resources up to load them into the spaceship. This all looks good. And if we have a look at the opposite end, you can see that, yes, we have a we have a nice stream of vulcanite coming through here. And this is the cheap vulcanite, the vulcan vulcanite that's produced from uh, core mining, whereas these ones, the ones that are cut off, are the, is the vulcanite that's produced from um, actual just normal mining. And so, as I said before, this one runs when there's, when there's a shortage of 50,000, this one runs when there's a shortage of... Yeah, the numbers are slightly funny, but th those are what we're transmitting over, and so that's what I have to work with. But the idea is that we only we only run these ones if we're really really short over on the other planet, or possibly here as well. Uh, whereas these ones will run whenever there's whenever there's any need whatsoever, and so you can see that that's flowing merrily. It's probably enough. If we start to have a shortage, then we can kick in with the other supplies as well. But I think this is all absolutely fine. The next one to look at is Talos, and that had a, um, a bit of a sulphur shortage before, which was causing not enough of the beryllium to come through. So I nudged the spaceship, told it to get tra travel again, and I also increased the number of the amount of sulphur I'm requesting here from I think 15,000 to 25,000. And there's now there's plenty of room in this warehouse. We could store a full 25,000 in there, and there's only one ship doing the route, so that will be absolutely fine. We'll be able to store all of that, um, and I think this has sorted the problem out completely. The uh, I don't know exactly what state the ship's in. If we look at the other end, we can see that. <clears throat> it's this spaceship here. It is currently, yeah, it's currently half full, and we've got almost half the amount of sulfur down there at the bottom, and there's a load of sulfur in here. In fact, we've got another one and a half thousand plus whatever's on this belt. So as the train comes around, it's going to pick up more of the sulfur. It's going to take it down, and we're going to—I think we're going to have—we're going to have plenty of sulfur down there. So I think this is all sorted out now. You can see that because we're at, we are currently a bit short of beryllium at the other end, we are still letting the uh, the, the, the supplies that come from mining run, and it's, it's kind of keeping up. We've got some gaps on the belts here. It's not quite as good as I would like it to be, but I think it's good enough. I think we have enough supplies of uh, beryllium that we're probably going to be okay running it like this. But I will continue to keep an eye on the system and watch how much um, beryllium we're being told we have over here. Now, if we look at these numbers, we can see that there's currently 59,000 beryllium over in Norbit. And if we look at the number here, we can see that this one cuts off at 60,000. So as soon as the next spaceship goes, and unloads almost anything over there at all, we will then reckon that we've got enough to cut off this, this extra supply here. And that means that these trains will then be able to stop running. We'll be able to build up a buffer here, and so when we do have another shortage, we can then run through it and so on and so on. So I think this is all absolutely fine. We've got, we've got a decent supply of beryllium as it is. Uh, we're producing it at a nice steady rate at the moment. We're producing it at the faster rate, because as I said, we've kicked in all of the production. But then when we have a surplus, we can have all of these ones stop. We'll go down to just producing from the core fragments. We'll produce it a bit more slowly, sure. But if we do then find we're running through it a bit too quickly over in Norbit, we can always buff, beef that up a little bit. And if I do discover that we have, we're having problems over here in the future, there's going to be plenty of barrel patches out here that I could build train, train systems out to. There's 24 million down here, there's... I don't know, I can't see any more great ones, but I've done a plague rocket on this planet, so it's a safe one to go to. There's six million there, there's a hidden patch there that I can't really see. So if we do start to have problems, then I'll scan the planet, I'll put in more core mining drills, because there's actually quite a lot of those, quite a lot more of those I could put in. Maybe more core processing, <clears throat> maybe maybe further upgrades to the uh, core processing down here, because you can see these are only blue belts, we've got only got the tier one beacons in here, and the tier three speed modules. All of this could be upgraded quite a lot. It just hasn't needed to be, because we've had enough ber beryllium so if you know if it ain't broke there's no point in going in and fixing it 
there's other there's always other stuff to get on with and looking back over in Norbit, you can see that, yeah, we've got quite a lot of uh, beryllium here. There's uh, 51,000 in there. There's another eight and a bit thousand in there. That's that 59,000 I was talking about. And that means there's enough in there to fill this train up quite a few times. So even we, when we did some research that was very heavy on the Astra catalogs earlier, it, it hasn't made a significant difference. We seem to have plenty of beryllium at the moment. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Talos is, of course, also making all of the Nequium. And that's been... Um, interesting. We've had um, various, it's been running well and it's been running less well. So we had a problem at one point where we ran out of, um, of uh, Vitalic Reagent completely. There were there were a list of, there was sort of a, a few things that we were worried about, a few things that could have caused it, uh, such as uh, maybe the spaceship wasn't bringing enough of it over. And I wondered if that was because we'd taken over a huge amount of the uh, of the Naquitite crystals recently. So most of what we get through is the Naquium ingots, and those, those have a slightly different recipe. They use things in slightly different proportions to the crystals, so I was wondering if perhaps making an entire spaceship worth of crystals had ripped through more reagent than I was expecting. Uh, Mark was worried that perhaps his um, system wasn't bringing enough over from Big Grid because he'd been doing some rebuilding. But no, it turned out it was a much simpler problem than that. Over here, we've been, I'd been feeding through all of the all the resources that are supposed to go onto these belts were being kept, in theory, in these two warehouses. But I had a filtering system here that was saying, don't only put 14,000 of each of those into there, and then I was wiring it through and so on. And that had broken because it was, tell, it was trying to load through things that weren't in this warehouse and not trying to pass through the things that were. So I've modified it now and, and instead now we're up here we are we're taking everything except the three things that are meant to go down this belt. So here I've set blacklist filters for those things instead of whitelist filters for the things that I do want down here because there's too many items. So I think we had so much possibly sulfur maybe holmium cable I can't remember exactly what it was but it was all blocking up this warehouse and that meant we weren't able to unload the reagent out of the trains into here and therefore it wasn't able to flow along through here and therefore it wasn't going down here to be made into the into the crystals. And so that was a that was a problem. It once it was once I found the problem, it was nice and easy to fix, but it was a little bit of a silly problem. However, that is now uh, humming through quite nicely. You can see that we've got this purple belt is running nearly flat out. I think that's not quite 100%. Yeah, the the, uh, the right hand side, which is or the, the the starboard side, which is the left side, looking from here, is not running quite flat out. But we have a decent amount of it coming through here. We are processing it through at the speed we intend to. And we have this little trickle of, actually we've got both types of, um, of, of, of thing coming through at the moment. We obviously pulled a load of the crystals through, and now we're just starting to restock the belt down here. So that's, as you can see, it's filling up. And we've got 800 of them in there, which is an odd number to have, but yeah, I'm... Oh, and now a little bit more is flowing through. So, you know, I'm going to trust the system. I think at the other end, we presumably have a little bit of a shortage. So we're sort of just topping it up over here and trying to keep it about right. And that's why the Naquium ingots aren't coming through quite as quickly as they normally do, because quite a lot of the Naquium is going into making the, uh, the crystals instead. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be sufficient to keep everything happy. We shall have to see. Over on Kothar, we had some sporadic problems with the uh, with the iridium production. So uh, Mike had a bit of a look at it. I think he might have given a spaceship a nudge or something like that. And it looks like the problems are still occurring a little bit. So, no, okay, we do have a nice steady stream of the um, iridium uh blast cake coming out here to go off to finish off processing and we do have quite a lot of the red beads however we don't have any more being built because over here we've run out of uh, Vulcan vulcanite once again so we will it will remain to be seen whether there is enough sitting in the system over here to actually finish it off um, there's a little bit in a train up here but that'll never go anywhere because the train is mostly empty there is, if we look at the opposite end up here, we can see there's none in the spaceship. However, the spaceship is gone. So that probably means that the spaceship is off getting more vulcanite and will bring it back over here. So I think this may well be okay. We Again, we're going to need to keep an eye on it next week just to make sure that the problems are fixed. But I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that because the spaceship is not here, it is currently out going off to Norvis to get some more vulcanite to unload the previous load of, um, of, of iridium. And so by the time it comes back, it's going to bring it back enough vulcanite that will then be able to make another spaceship's worth. And it'll pro have brought back a bit more than that as well so we will gradually start to fill up the buffers down on the planet and so we'll eventually start to have enough in this train that it can start to bring it can bring it down here and enough then that this system will carry on running until we have enough iridium to actually completely fill the uh, to, to completely fill the warehouses so when the spaceship comes back it can immediately fill up and head back out again so yes i think the system is working um it's just it's just doing a little bit of buffer filling so uh, it sh should be okay Njord is in a, a similar sort of position after Tristan fixed it uh, last week. So we've got, we have a, a, a stream of the, um, what's this stuff? This is Holmium uh, flowing into the, in, in, in over here, going into the train to be taken up. We've got a, a nice healthy stream of the, of the, um, intermediates coming down. So we've got the, the plastic and the vulcanite and the cryonite that are required to make the Holmium. 
up in space here. We are gradually filling up the, uh, the spaceship. It is now about a third, maybe a bit more than a third full. And so the system does seem to be working. Tristan's gone in there, he's stamped on the problems, he's got enough of all of the resources being brought out here now that the system should be working. Snowdrop, on the other hand, had some weird problems. Tristan noticed that core chunks were being shipped in the spaceship system, and that's not supposed to happen. And it's not a problem if it happens, because over at the other end we can filter them out, we can process them over on Norvis in the, in the normal core processing facility and deal with them over there. But it's not really what's meant to happen. Over here, that we're meant to, we're meant to just have the byproducts because crushing the um, crushing the core chunks down into the byproducts is more is a more efficient way of transporting them than leaving them as core chunks because because things like iron ore stack all the way up to fifty, sand goes all the way up to two hundred, um, whereas the uh, core chunks only stack up to ten or twenty or something like that. So uh, you can get a lot more into the into the same space by processing it first. However, down here, it turns out the reason it's backed up is because Tristan had too much petroleum gas, and so he needs to have a certain amount of heavy oil for some. Well, that's because that's required somewhere in the uh, in the cryonite processing. So he's been cracking oil down that comes out of the core chunks and probably out of the ground as well, down into heavy oil, and then you've still got the light oil and the petroleum gas that you need to do something with, and that had backed up. It had filled up the tank up here, and so the system had ground to a halt, and so he wasn't able. To, and so and so this system was bypassing and spitting out spitting out core chunks instead. So in order to fix that, he's got this system here which is turning the petroleum gas into um, into solid in solid fuel cubes which can then be turned into processed fuel and then shipped away on the on, on the belt here unfortunately when he first fixed that it still wasn't working because it wasn't getting rid of the uh, processed fuel fast enough because too much of the space in the train and the spaceship was being taken up by the cryonite so what he's done is he's put a pause on the cryonite production until there's no uh, pr processed fuel coming through along this belt here and so that means we're not going to get any cryonite through until basically all of the uh, all this petroleum gas in this tank has been turned into solid fuel and processed fuel and then got rid of. So hopefully this isn't going to cause a problem um, and we're not going to get we're not going to run out of cryonite. But at the moment we are just essentially trying to dump all of this processed fuel, all well all the petroleum gas out as processed fuel, which is an odd way to be doing things. I will not uh, I'm not going to deny that. However, I think it is probably going to sort the problem out eventually. It just means that in the, at, at the moment, if we look in this spaceship up here, we can see that a lot of the stuff that's going into it is just processed fuel, and that's not quite what you want in a cryonite ship. So it, essentially, there's going to be a lot of processed fuel flowing through here until we've got rid of it all. And then once that's done, then we can start to ship through the uh, ship through large quantities of cryonite again. But, it would, but if there starts to be any sort of backlog on the processed fuel, then the cryonite will be paused and the processed fuel will be given a price. Priority. As I say, that feels very strange, and I'm not entirely comfortable with it. But I mean, I th but it's going to work. It, it will be a good. It'll be a way of of, uh, of keeping the system up and running. And once the uh, the buffer down on uh, Snowdrop has been cleared out, and we sent a couple of spaceships full of, of processed fuel, probably, uh, then we can start running it a bit more as normal. He also says that as a sort of encouragement to the system to fix itself a bit quicker, he's um, pulled a bit. He, he's he's pushed a few extra trains worth of cryonite out to stations which have room to store it, but didn't necessarily need it. So, so he's pushed a bit more of it out to stations like this one that wouldn't necessarily have been asking for another train worth of cryonite just yet because they haven't triggered. To, they haven't got below whatever the triggering number is, which apparently is five hundred. 500 uh, but 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 they can take quite a lot more in here so actually this one probably hasn't had an extra load come to it because it's only got 15,000 in it but this is a sort that could easily take another one so we could push another train out here and that could that would create a little bit more space and that would mean that the uh, the spaceship that's bringing it over would then be able to unload all of this crazy quantities of processed fuel. You can see there's there's 21 th no there's more than 21,000. There's 26,000 processed fuel in, in these warehouses here, which the spaceship has unloaded and then headed off to go and get even more of it. So I think he's going to need to do a little bit more of that nudging of the train to go out a few more times to get rid of the um, the 20. 28,000 um, cryonite that's in here in order to let the process fuel run through and then end up allow it to go down here. Another possibility would be to set a filter on on the um, on these loaders here and say I only want you to do uh, processed fuel. Uh, and then same there, there, and there. And now that will ensure that the processed fuel gets pulled out of these as well as the cryo. Actually, it might not because the the cryo, unless we take the cryo out fast and it can be loaded in, it's not going. It's not actually not going to work. Anyway, but there there are there are possibilities you you could do to to force the uh, processed fuel to come out of here a bit quicker and get rid of it. But it's probably not necessary. Probably not worth it. We can just let the system sort of tick over and eventually it'll sort itself out and things will be a bit tidier and we can start to have um, have nice things again. 
All of that processed fuel will then, of course, be brought down in the junk trains and unloaded here, where it'll go into these, these disposal trains, which take it up to the core processing. And then when it arrives over here, we've got, yes, here we go, we've got this, this belt, which will take it away. It'll go down here, through here, into, into this, in, into here, where it'll fill up this train, which will then bring it over to here, where it gets unloaded and put into this crazy size storage facility. So you can see there is, there is plenty of room here to put lots and lots of extra processed fuel. So we're not going to run out of it. Um, and then that can be then then be fed, it's presumably taken out from here, yes, it's then fed out from here down and goes into this train, which will take it off to go and refuel all of the other trains around the factory, making sure that everything can just keep running, keep ticking over nicely and using up and, and keep the trains running on the process fuel. Now, my, I was worried a little bit when, when I realised how much he was making over there that we were going to run into an issue where we we're going to have too much process fuel and we'd, we'd get an overload of it somewhere. However, seeing all of these empty warehouses, I'm, I'm quite reassured. And if we look at the amount of processed fuel that's been produced and used up over the last 50 hours in this case, you can see that those are actually, those numbers are actually pretty similar. We're actually using it up slightly faster than we've been generating it, uh, which is good, which is a good thing because it means we've been working through the buffer up here, um, and we have an emergency system here that will make it out of well, firstly out of wood if it possibly can, if there's any wood available, and then out of rocket fuel in the case of emergency. So we can we we aren't going to run out of processed fuel for our trains, but we also don't seem to be creating a ridiculous oversupply. Of it. Looking at the all-time graph, we can see that we've made uh, we've made 7.6 million and we've used 6.9 million. So there is 700,000 uh, processed fuel knocking around somewhere in the factory. But a lot of that is going to be the ones on these belts here. It's going to be in trains. It's going to be in the warehouses. It's going to be in the fueling systems for the various trains as well. So there's a load load of it along here. So I think this is absolutely fine. We're using up the processed fuel fast enough that we're not going to that we can bring loads of it in from from out on Snowdrop and also from on Big Rid where it's, where there's something that's being turned into processed fuel. Oh yes, where the excess wood from the uh, vitamelange processing is being turned into processed fuel as well. So it does seem that despite having an enormous amount of it being dumped into the system, we are able to process, we are able to use it up with, with all of the, the uh, trains we've got. And actually it's only the ground trains that are using it, because the space trains are all using batteries. And trains on other planets, are, they might be using processed fuel, but if they are, they're making it locally. It, yeah, we, all of that is just being sank into the trains on this, on, on Norvis, which is, um, Quite a, quite a surprise when you when when I think about it that way. We are our trains are very fuel hungry, and I guess processed fuel doesn't go all that far. Back on Big Rid, Mark has been hard at work once again with the uh, Vitamelange processing, and so this is another of those things that got broken by the the update that was supposed to make Crastorio 2 a little uh, less unbalanced, supposedly. Um, and so that required that meant that uh, Mark had to come in here and put in a lot more of these electrolysis plants in order to make presumably more um, more chlorine in order to, and and I guess the hydrogen in order to make the hydrogen chloride to make the lithium chloride to make the uh, to make the vitalic reagent because suddenly we've started using enormous quantities of vitalic reagent. I'm chewing through huge amounts of it over in um, on Talos to make the Naquium, and I think quite a lot of it is being used in um, in the space station as well for various biological researches and things like that. So we've suddenly had a huge demand on the Vitalic reagent, and we still don't seem to be making it. So let's see, that's because we don't have any Vitamelange extract, we don't have any Vitamelange extract because this belt is empty, because we just straight up aren't producing it quite quickly enough. So I do know that Mark has been talking about expanding the uh, the, the Vitamelange processing system down here, and it sounds like that might be required. Uh, looking at this, we have yeah, we have a nice healthy supply of well, we have enough of the uh, the Vitalic Vita Spice. Is this a youth spice? Yes, Vitamelange Vitamelange Spice. That's hard to say uh, to go off to the uh, the spaceship. But then we're not producing the Vitamelange extract quickly enough over here, despite the tier 6 speed modules and uh, productivity modules over here. So I guess that's going to mean that we just need another one of all of this. That's horrendous. Uh, that's terrifying. Although maybe it's just... Let's, let's go and find out where this belt is going, because this one seems to be getting priority. And this is making uh, oh, this is making Vitalic Acid, and that's the other thing that Mark says he's fixed. So he's put in a new design over here that's then chewing through lots and lots of everything, making lots of Vitalic Acid, and that's presumably going off to a bottling plant. Yes, uh, oh, that's going off to be made into scrubbers. There's presumably a Vitalic Acid barreling plant around here somewhere. There is a pipe that goes off the top of here. La 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 la. Uh, all the way over to here, where we are. Yes, here we go. Here, here is where we are barreling it up. So, yes, I, I this looks vaguely familiar. I think this was where we used to make vitalic acid. No, this is vitalic epoxy. Sorry, I take that back. This is vitalic epoxy, which takes the vitalic acid and the vitalic reagent. Oh, the vitamelange stuff is such a such a tangle and such a headache and sort of, a sort of convoluted recipes. So, yes, I guess that the hope is here that eventually the vita. Um, Acid being produced over here will catch up with the requirements of of, uh, of the supply. We'll send that. We'll send. We'll send enough of it out in the barrels from. I've lost it again. <laughs> from from here, 
Uh, yes, and we 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 have we seem to have done that. We've managed to catch up. There's now we have a full belt of barrels. So this pipe is now yes, this pipe is now filled up. And if we look all the way back along here, there was a tank somewhere down here, wasn't there? Yes, this tank over here is now very nearly full. So in another 5,000 vitalic acid, this will stop taking all of the uh, enriched vit vitamilange, what's it, what's it actually called? Vitamilange extract. And then at that point, we'll start flowing it out this way. So we'll start to get the vitalic reagent. Maybe Mark will add in the um, add add in this 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 uh, thing over here. So if we, in fact, we could we could we could make this a little bit fairer. I could link that to there like that, and then copy paste like that, and then we'll fill this one up. When this gets to 500, okay, this one's at a, this one's triggering on 100. I don't know. Let's trigger that one on 100 as well. I, I, I don't know how this system is supposed to work. But using this, we can we can um, set which way we want, how we want to prioritize the uh, the vitamilange extract. Make sure it all goes where we want it to and we produce all the things we need. So I guess along here, we're prioritizing, we're now, we're prioritizing this vit vitalic reagent production and the acid production over here. We could, but if we get enough in here, then it'll start to flow out to go over to the rest of the vitalic reagent production as well. I suspect that's probably not going to happen. I, it's, it's possible that may, maybe there'll be some buffer filling up going along on along here. Yeah, these have now are filling up their inventory, so I think we might start to backlog along here on this belt. I'm not, I'm not fully convinced though, but we will see. And anyway, there is there, there is a lot of vitalic uh, extract being produced. It's, and we are very nearly full over here, so at that point, these machines will then fill up their internal buffers. They'll stop running. As you can see, this is now starting to back up along here. So now we do finally start have a bit of a vitalic reagent being made. That can flow out along the belt over here. All of these things then flow up to along here, this, and this is the, uh, the system that loads the spaceship. And you can see, looking at the belts along here, we have enough of the acid, we have enough of the scrubbers, we have enough of the extract and the spice and the epoxy and the, the core chunks. Uh, we're, flowing, we're letting all of the junk flow through because you just want to get rid of that. The one we don't have enough of is the reagent, but that is now starting to flow at least. Um, I wonder how short of it we are. Ah, so yes, we're saying we're watching for this to be less than a thousand. So we're trying to put a thousand of it into this chest here, and then we run along here whenever this is less than thirty thousand, and it's currently at just under six thousand. So we are waiting for a lot of vitalic reagent to arrive. So this is going to just keep flowing through for about twenty twenty thousand or so, uh, just to get the, the the demand over on Norvis filled back up again. But the system is working; it is producing it. We shall have to wait and see whether it's producing it quickly enough now. I have my doubts, having seen the rate it gets used up on over on um, Talos, but it is, be it is at least being produced now, and that's the important thing. <laughs> And finally, we have Stardust. Yes, out, out here we've now now that the um, the Naquium production's kicked in because we've started doing some Naquium related research and building. Hurrah! At last, we've been able to see how the system is getting on, and it works. It's kind of working. It's not a hundred percent yet, not quite. But if we look out here, you can see that the spaceships are starting to flow. So Stardust in the order of the asteroid is nearly there. Stardust two dust year is on its way out. Stardust on, and Stardust Express is on or on the uh, sorry Stardust with Vengeance are on their way back. Stardust Express also on its way out. So the ships are ticking through quite nicely and so I've been watching the uh, watching how the acid production has been going on over here because you'll remember that the problem we, we ran into the problem that I built up a load of mines every one of those mines and suddenly required 180 or 130 thousand um, sulfuric acid to be produced and we just didn't have the sulfur available here so all the ships have been coming out they've been bringing a load of sulfur with them which has been enough to top them up and if we look in here you can see that there is enough um, crushed naquatite in, in these warehouses they're all completely full the belts have, have, have blocked up all the way back down to here and this one's also full now as well so we've got enough crushed naquatite now to completely fill up the spaceship when it arrives. However, we haven't quite had enough to keep these trains full and flowing. So when the next spaceship arrives, it will fill up with the naquitite from here and it will unload all of the, uh, the sulfur it's produced. That sulfur will then be processed down here into sulfuric acid. It will fill the tanks up along here. The trains will run and run and run and run. And then probably by the time the next spaceship arrives, we'll have enough left here. And if we're really lucky, we might have a bit of acid left over. So we are making progress. Each time a ship arrives, we have slightly more acid left in this tank when it leaves. Um, which then get, admittedly then gets churned through, ma making the uh, the the, um, the naquatite over here. But it is getting there. So we we do have two tanks that are basically completely empty. But we also have all these warehouses full of naquatite. So we, we're working through it. It is we are we are definitely making progress here. It's just. A little bit gradual. Um, however, if there is full warehouses when a spaceship arrives, then that's that's good enough to be honest. That's getting us the best, as much throughput as we possibly could get. So I think I'm pretty much happy with that. However, I am looking forward to seeing these tanks fill up a little bit further. 
One thing I did do in order to help a little bit was I put a limiter on this pump over here to say only run when there's more than 50,000 in this tank. And that was because at one point we had something like 100,000 up here and absolutely none at all down here. And I thought that's not the balance I want to go for. So let's let's try and keep this one because this is in a way this is the primary system. I they're, they're, they're equivalent, it doesn't really matter. But I thought, let's try, if, I, if I set a limiter on here, then we won't pump through, we'll keep, we, we'll, when this one has a decent amount in it, then we'll pass some through up to here. So at that point we can have both of them running, uh, rather than this one run, rather than this one gra get emptying out completely, and this one having enough for both of them to run from. So it was a minor change, but I think it helped quite a bit, and it, it's help, helping the throughput. And as you can see, we, things, things are now basically working. We're just waiting for this ship to arrive. And it's nearly there. So as you can see, this has about 10,000 sulfur in it because that's the amount we're requesting. I'm not sure exactly how much is required to, you know, fill up a, a, a spaceship, but it's less than 10,000. So bringing this, this amount out is absolutely fine. Then it can all be unloaded here. It flows down the belts here, as you can see. And then we can start making that into acid, which will mean the trains will start to run. But it doesn't matter too much because, as I said, there is enough um, naquitite in here that it's going to be able to just straight up load the spaceship up without it having to wait at all. It's just running straight through as fast as it possibly can. The acid is, yeah, the, the sulfur's coming down here. The acid will flow. And fairly soon, this train will fill up. There we go. That can now leave. The next train can pull in and it can start then unload. It can then unload its naquitite to crush it to, to be crushed and then passed over into the warehouses ready for the next ship. Now we do have a certain amount of other stuff being loaded in here. You can see all of these data cards. Uh, but that's that's absolutely fine. We uh, we need those to be shipped through as well. So as long as they, uh, they they do take up a bit of space, but data cards stack quite quite highly. We're not making that many of them, so it doesn't really make a huge difference the amount of naquitite. And look how quickly it fills up once it's just pumping the naquitite in because it's such small stack sizes. There we go. The ship is the ship is now ready to go, I think. It's flickering. There we go. Yes, ship, ship is now departing like that. And we can now wait for the next ship to arrive and just do all of that again. And my my expe expectation is in the time it takes for the Stardust, the Dustier, to fly from here to here, we're going to... We're going to I don't know for certain whether we'll have filled these uh, warehouses up, but we'll be pretty close. And once we've filled up the buffers, to a, uh, the acid buffers, to a point that both the systems are running properly, then I think it's going to be much more reliable. We're going to have a, a steadier flow coming in, and we're definitely going to have enough naquitite available for the next ship to take. And you can see over here, this is working quite nicely. It's up to 14,000 already, despite trains coming in and grabbing some, uh, gra grabbing some of the acid to take away with them. So I'm pretty confident this is all going to be fine. And that one only needs another 4,000, for example. So, yeah, it's being produced quite a bit faster than it's being taken away. Right, that seems to be about the right length for a video. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. This has been looking at all of the outposts and what's been going wrong with them and how we've gone out and fixed them. So you can see that I think we had quite a productive stream there where we didn't necessarily make any huge leaps forward in uh, in science packs particularly um, although there were some there were some major improvements made which I'll talk about tomorrow however we did go in and made all of our um, all of our supply chains a bit more robust and fixed the problems that have been sort of developing over time so I'm pretty happy with that I think we've made we've made some good progress there I'll be back tomorrow to carry on talking about everything else that's been done there's been there's been some Arcosphere stuff as well and uh, and a few more things that we've and a few more things that we've worked on so I don't think I'll have trouble filling another episode um, and then of course I'll be back on Monday with another stream um, where we'll hopefully make a, some more progress we'll keep an eye on the acid over here and all of the other outposts just make sure that you know they're ticking over properly but there are more there's always more science packs to be worked on so I think we'll um, we'll, we'll carry on with that uh, and then I'll be back on Wednesday with the satisfactory stream as well there should also be a video coming out for uh, non-supporters on Thursday because it came out this Thursday. Uh, yes, uh, for uh, for supporters. So keep an eye out for that. That's uh, talking about how Mark spaceships work because they're quite complex and there's quite a lot of interesting stuff going on in there. So I've made a video all about those. So as I say, lots of videos coming out on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.